I don't know about you, but I'm in a good mood. I'm so flying high. We had 12 games of action Woo! last night. A lot I of games. We're going to get to each and every one of them in some way, shape, or form over the next hour, but there's no better place to start than the game that we all had circled on our calendar since the scheduling came out, the debut of one Victor Wembanyama in San Antonio. The building was packed. I rarely say I am jealous of Richard Jefferson, but I was <laughs> because he was in the building. This is what Victor was doing in warm-ups alone. So you know that when tip-off actually came underway, we were all excited to see it. It did not take much time, less than one minute, in fact, for Victor to leave his mark with that block on Kyrie Irving. Yes, and look, this is the great part about Victor, being able to block shots outside the paint. And look at the big fella. Well, he's not a big fella. He's a 7-4 Kevin Durant stretching the floor offensively. And look at the passion. You seen the veins in his neck? <laughs> did you see him today? Oh, I did. All right, cool. Once again, <laughs> pulls up for three, gets that one to go as well. Every single time he touched the ball, fans were excited. Those are the only three points. Those are the only points he would score rather through the first three quarters because he would struggle a little bit in foul trouble here. So we're going to pick this one up. At this point, we're in the fourth quarter, and this is really where Victor left his mark, Zach. That was the first possession where he played center, and immediately it was a lob dunk. One possession. San Antonio a three to cut it to a two point game at this point and then once again Victor this is what it is all about and one he lets his passion be known and you gotta love it just look at the rim run somewhat of his size the physicality watch this here Sinead. oh Malika face up better midi. late than never midi yeah midi he, he, doesn't, even see, guys, he doesn't even see Grant Williams it no. wouldn't he quite be but enough he felt him. because Devin I mean rather Victor Wembanyama. I mean, Luka Doncic, one of the best closers in the game, even over Victor. Let's take a listen to Luka after the game. It was fun, you know. Uh, we knew the whole building is going to be loud and everything. Uh, you know, he's probably one of the best prospects to enter the NBA. So uh, it was fun, you know. Uh, for me personally, I like challenges. So that was a fun challenge. Of course, I'm going to think about this game because it's the only game I've ever played. So, but. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a long season. We got honestly, we got other things to take care of. One of the toughest things for a player is you get into foul trouble and you never get in a rhythm and you're in and out of the game and that sort of thing. So, I thought his maturity showed even at a young age where he came in with the last I think seven minutes and just played. We ran some stuff for him. He executed where a lot of guys would have been totally out of it by then because they were in foul trouble and didn't get their rhythm. So I thought he had a, a wonderful outing. So Wemby was in a little bit of foul trouble. That was for the first three quarters. But then he flipped the switch in the fourth. He scored nine of his final 15 points in that last frame. That's thanks in part to his aggression, getting a little bit closer to the rim in the fourth quarter. I think that even Victor would say, right, it was a little bit of an up and down night for him. But what stood out to you from his debut, Perk? The number one. That's how many national televised games the Spurs had last season. I already know, look, Victor Wimbledon, but he's that dude before he even play his next game. But they got 20 national televised games. I was watching the Spurs play last night because I wanted to see Victor Wimbledon. More Victor Wimbledon. And you know what happens when you're in the locker room and the Spurs only had one national televised game? See, other guys want to be seen, right, and put the world on notice. And that's okay, but they have to realize that we're here to watch one person and one person only, and that's the guy that is going to be the future face of the NBA. Sure. Now, I have no complaints about what he did because he was in foul trouble, his growing pains, a lot of things going through his mind. But at the end of the day, it was sometimes he was standing around too much, and he needs to demand the ball more, and Pop needs to get him the ball more. He is going to lead the league in forced uh-ohs when a jump shooter <laughs> rises up. Oh, no. I can't. You, you, don't, you don't see a guy like Kyrie Irving in that clip raise up for a jumper and a guy who's right in your line of sight just walk over. The guy who's not guarding you and be like, you know what, I'm just going to take that right out of the air. And you saw other jump shooters late in the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He is perk. Called it. Defensive player of the year. You might be right, big fella. If the Spurs win enough games, he's gonna have a shot. I'm I here can't for even this. Kick my leg. Uh oh, you can. Let's just Careful. keep him down there. You don't yeah. want to. You don't want to pull is, a muscle. This is a what is this? Yeah, you yeah, don't want to pull precarious. a muscle, big bro. Uh, the Spurs' offense is going to be a work in progress, but their defense through Victor Webanyama has real potential, yep. at least individually. And the numbers are staggering. When Victor was on the floor, 35% of the Mavs' shots came in the paint. 
when he was off of the floor, 50% of the mass shot came in the paint. Mind you, he only played 23 minutes. So he has an effect. The distance, you talked about it on first take, Malika. Three feet difference, people are shooting further back based on Victor. So defensive player of the year, I thought at first, I was like, that's that's interesting. Low in history for a rookie, but very possible for this guy. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, but I we, this is- all the flowers up. Uh, yes, it's too early for you to get about flowers. Kendrick Perkins. And Kendrick, you are a winner. We talk about winners on this show. I don't want us to overlook the main reason why Victor went home with the L last night in his first game. We know that Kyrie and Luka are some of the best closers in the NBA. Luka Doncic, his brilliance, it was on full display. If the end of last season left a sour taste in Mavs fans' mouth, Luka Doncic quickly reminded them that when you have a perennial MVP candidate, you always have a chance. He finished with 33, 13, and 10. That includes the winning play, after winning play, after winning play down the stretch. He became the third player all time with a 30-point triple-double in a season opener. Last season, the Mavs were the third slowest team in the league. But for moments like this, times like this, it absolutely pays off. Luka Doncic single-handedly brought the Mavs a win down the stretch with his scoring, playmaking, but most importantly, his change of speed. Oftentimes, players speed up to explode. This time, he slows down, uses the screen, slows down, keep his defender on the back, down, down in this situation, and able to get the and one. Slows down again. This time, draws two, kicks to the corner to Kyrie. Fourth quarter, down one, big shot to get the lead again. And then last but not least, this is the dagger. You send the double. He's on an island. This is his signature step back. Whether it is finishing at the rim and one, finding people in the corner, assist for three. And then lastly, just doing it himself, Luca showed up like he didn't miss a beat. And in clutch time, Luca generated more points himself than the Spurs did overall. He had 11 points while the Spurs had eight in the final five minutes of the game. Plus, he finished with a step back dagger. It was his change of speed. Very often, we see players go super fast to explode, but instead, Luca slows down and it works to his advantage. Janae, this is what Mavs fans want to see early in the season. But while Luca was great, especially down the stretch. Zion Williamson, I mean, he may have even been a little bit better here. We have all been waiting to see what Zion will look like. Oh, by the way, that's Jaron Jackson Jr., the reigning defensive player of the year in the middle there. Zion says, that's okay. I don't care. Get out my way. Uh! And then off the split of the pick and roll. And then right here, look, just off the bird catching lives. But the passion. Look at his teammates. Yeah, Zion, that's what he need, Malika. These are the same teammates that called him and said, we need a little bit more. And he said, OK, copy. Oh, I uh. got you, Zach. I mean, that's a face-up drive from a, a tank. I mean, that's ridiculous. And no one catches lob. The spin for the lob is Zion's thing. No one has ever done it with that level of explosion. Finishes over Xavier Tillman there. The Pelicans get the win over the shorthanded Memphis Grizzlies. Zion Williamson, he scored the final 12 points for the Pelicans against the Grizzlies. That was tied for the third most consecutive points to end a game in franchise history. And the name at the top of that list? Zion Williamson himself with 14 straight in 2022. So, Perk, you have said that Zion was the number one player. Look at his face. The most to prove this season. And now you are mean mugging me. Are you ready to believe in him again? Hell no. Oh. Hell no. And I'm not about to go off of one game last night going against the Memphis Grizzlies with a depleted roster. Now, look, it's great to see him out there. But correct me if I'm wrong, didn't the Pelicans start this way last season? Wasn't they, they one did. of the best teams in the Western Conference? Yes, sir. Wasn't Zion Williamson doing MVP type things? Yes. And then what happened? So it's never a knock on what Zion could do and how dominant he could be. It's if he could sustain this, if he could keep it going, if he could be consistent. Now, talk to me game 60 of the season, then I might change my mind. Well, Shanae, it wasn't just 60. It's, it's you want to see Sis for 65. Yes. For me, for Zion, the threshold is playing 65 games. That's the new rule that the NBA instituted in case you missed it in the offseason. That allows you to be award eligible. So you're no longer just going to be an all-star. You have to be award eligible, play 65 games, then we'll be hyped. Let's just put that in perspective. 65 games, you have 65 games in one season. From Zion. Okay, that's great. We all want that. He's played 114 in four seasons. So, look, the Pelicans, when they're healthy, have as good a shot at anyone other than Denver and Phoenix at getting a top four seed in the West. Not necessarily making a finals run. Like, I think the Lakers and the Warriors have more chance to do that. But top four home court advantage, that's in play for them. But, look, one game. Like, the, the NBA season is about durability and being on the court. And, like, 65 games would be more than half of the total he's played in his entire career.